Welcome everyone. Hello everyone. It's good to see you all. And Art, I missed you for the last two weeks. Of course you did. Of course you did. That goes without saying. Cheers. Now I've got my tequila. What do you got? I have, I was confused whether I should have coffee, hot coffee and cold whiskey. So I mixed both up. I'm having both. Is there a name for that concoction? Parimal's Awesome Cocktail. Oh, wow. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so Art, I heard you were on the road. Yeah, I actually headed off to East Africa over the last two weeks. I returned, when was it? Just late last week. So it was fun. Yeah, I came in on Thursday. That's it. That's the ticket. Nor was it Tuesday. I don't even remember. Anyway, I'm drinking tequila and whatever happened in the past is the past. Is the past. How was your East Africa trip? Tell us, tell us about it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, because I'm leading a couple African trips later on in August, I wanted to see how Africa was handling COVID. And I have to say, I was very impressed with Kenya. Hmm. Uh, you know, it, you have to go through all the hula hoops of having COVID tests to get on the plane and so forth and so on. But the minute I landed in Africa, virtually everybody's wearing a mask. And very, mm. everybody's taking COVID extremely serious, which I was delighted to see. I overnighted in Nairobi, and then the next morning I went off into the Mara, stayed at, uh, Kin, uh, what was it? Kicheche. Okay, just a moment. Just wait for me, everybody. I'll catch up with you. Okay, I'll have my sip too. Kicheche. Kicheche. It's a uh, camp out in uh, the Mara region of uh, Kenya. It's actually on uh, as a conservancy. And I didn't really know much about conservancies, but I have to say they're a great idea because these lodge people will uh, rent the land from the uh, Maasai and the Maasai can keep grazing their cattle on the property, which initially I would have thought might be a bad idea, but in fact, it increases wild animals on the property because the grass is shorter and ungulates, you know, the gazelles, uh, all the animals that are eaten by the cats like short grass because they mm. can the predators. So the cows actually create more animals on the property. And I went into the Mara National Park. It was filled with tall grass and no animals. And so it was a great uh, stay. And then I went on to another property down by Mount Kilimanjaro. And I'll, I'll, I've got two slideshows this week and next week will be the second part of my African safari. So wow. I'm excited to show that. And then the week after next, I've asked you if you can find maybe a handful, like 20 photos that you like, just to demonstrate to the people that are fans of this, that I'm talking to somebody that actually has great talent. And I really believe that. So I want to show people, I'm not talking to some, you know, Yahoo, I'm talking to Paramal, the photographer. You never know, I still might be a Yahoo. So, I mean, both could be true. <laughs> Thank you, Art. And I would love to show. I know um, it would be an honor. I'm happy to show photos of maybe India, my India, my hometown, Pune and Mumbai, and some places yeah. that are not, you know, on the tourist map, some obscure places, but really interesting places, and maybe some stories behind the places. Yeah. Yeah. No, it will be fun. Great. Thank you. So, so as, we, as we talk, as we uh, start your images, which I'm really looking forward to, as a reminder to everyone, Earth is a Witness tonight at 7. Uh, great to have Art, obviously, on Earth is a Witness. I miss you, Art, for the last two months, but I totally get it that you were on the road. And I think we just have to keep the show going. And you are always a part of this Earth is a Witness, you and I, when you can make it. And, and if you have to travel... I will try my best to manage it without you, but I will miss you. Remember that. Well, you know, I'm the first one to admit to everybody, I'm not a total computer whiz or technology driven person, but I will make every effort to be with you on Earth is Our Witness, as I will also try to make every effort to have remote tequila times. It won't be every week yeah. uh, because as we are now starting to being, uh, being inocu inoculated. Uh, I think people will start to join us on the myriad of uh, workshops that we're about to announce the day after tomorrow. So we've just added about five brand new workshops 
And I would love to have people that are uh, fans of this show to come and see me actually drink tequila in front of them and to see how goofy I can actually be at the same time, learn photography. So um, yeah, by all means, come to our website the day after tomorrow and you'll see a huge list of new locations uh, up and down the Oregon, California, Washington coast. Uh, I'm looking forward to it, but I will also make every effort to have a tequila time remotely or here in my home. I, I totally enjoy it, but I also wanna say to the people that have stuck with this all last year, that I really appreciate the very heartfelt uh, moments that you've written to me and say that this is a highlight of their week. And I, that, I mean, it really makes a difference. It makes me want to do this into per perpetuity. Okay. Now, I'm learning that this tequila is pretty strong, Libby. <laughs> and I'm gonna have to stick to words that are like two syllables. If there's three <laughs> syllables, it's way beyond my capacity. Perpetuity, T, 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 It's yeah. like it goes well, on forever. Yeah, and you know, my tolerance for tequila is low simply because the last time I had tequila was last night, actually. Uh, so, you know, I dried out during the middle of the day. No, that's wonderful. And like I said, let's keep doing tequila time. I will do as many tequila times as possible. I love this too. And, and Oath is a witness. Uh, and obviously we'll adjust as travels happen and whatnot. But this is good. You, this okay. is for peeps. So I'm going to uh, get going on this thing because yep. I've got, you know, about 500 photos. I do okay. want to show tonight. Only 500 photos. Yep. 500 photos. Okay. So let's just see. Actually, there's about uh, 40, uh, 50 photos. I'll go fast simply because I want to keep, I know how valuable everybody's time is. So I think uh, last year we went a little long on several of the evenings, but we will try to keep it to in and around 30 minutes because it's right at the time when people want to have dinner or they're watching the news or whatever it may be. So we want to be respectful of your time. So Safari, on Safari. And back in, 41 years ago, I climbed Kilimanjaro on my very first trip to Africa. And here I am, what, you know, look at that clothing. I was, uh, you know, of course I had wardrobe uh, um, people that helped me with that wardrobe and it's quite stylish, I would say. Ah, uh, very, uh, those bell-bottom pants, oh my God. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> At any rate, I joined a couple of my friends from Seattle and we flew to uh, Tanzania and we, as you can see with our big old packs, we climbed Kilimanjaro. And most people that do it these days will hire guides and porters and carry their gear. But we were young and poor. And so we c carried all our gear up the mountain. And then I have to say that it was one of the hardest climbs of my life, simply because we went from 4,000 feet to 20,000 feet in four days, not nearly enough time to acclimatize. We were in great shape, but it was, uh, it was a haul. And most people would do it in five or six days with porters. And as you can see, as we're nearing the summit, back then, 41 years ago, um, Kilimanjaro still had some residual uh, glaciers on the summit. So why am I talking about that now? Because I was there last week, and this is a, uh, a memorable sunrise over the Indian Ocean and over Mount Mowenzi, which is just under 17,000 feet. You know, uh, 3,000 feet above my beloved Mount Rainier. So it's a very high secondary peak on Mount Kilimanjaro. Wow. And so now I'm segueing into what was photographed last week, and that's Mount Mowenzi. And that was actually photographed from one of my, I mean, from my uh, room at a lodge. So I have these beautiful views of Kilimanjaro and Mowenzi from a lodge. And so it just brought back a flood of memories from 41 years ago. But yeah, the views out uh, wow. of yeah. this mountain, you've got Mount Kilimanjaro just rising above the plain. That was the herd of Oryx I was talking about. And just rolling hills and in the distance are those mountains where the rhinos are. So it's a really wild national park. I can honestly say there were very few people at the lodge uh, in fact, there were times where it was just myself and the two people I was traveling with. And so consequently, you're driving over this vast open area and the only people you see are the people you know in your own vehicle. Mm. So that, it, it, it 
probably was reminiscent of what safaris were like in the 50s and earlier before it became a thing. Mm, beautiful. So I talked about chiaroscuro light and the light and shadow across the plains. And then I started talking about how I was working in the margins of the day because the book Earth is uh, Night on Earth is coming out later this year. And so if I can get photos into the book at the last minute, I'm always happy about that. It gives me yeah. a motivation. This is this herd of zebra were shot in really dark conditions, but a proper exposure brings more light than what I actually could see with my naked eye. So some of these photos, and as I go forward, you can see some of these would be uh, fitting for Night on Earth. Yes, beautiful. Yeah. And this herd of elephants were so dark, I was reliant on autofocus to focus on their tusks. Had they not had white tusks, I think I wouldn't have been able to focus on these guys. So it's, you know, it's way post sunset. It's in the twilight of the day and appropriate for potential inclusion in that book. It's lovely. Look at the clouds. Yeah, well, you know, it was the rainy season. It wasn't typically the main rainy season, but there was a lot of raining, uh, rain falling. And it was also the time where a lot of ungulates, a lot of gazelles and um, other animals were giving birth. So mm. it was a very different you know, typically I would go to uh, Africa in August or September, but this time was a little different for me. And this is, you know, I shot this group of elephants and only one photo came out sharp because it was so dark and they were moving around. But I do like this image uh, for Night on Earth because photographing landscapes or cityscapes for at night is much easier than shooting or photographing animals on the move quite mm. often. It's very evident why. And Chulu National Park is very close to Amboseli National Park, which is right at the base of Kilimanjaro. So we went over for a day and historically, I've been there many times over the years. And, you know, on a good, on a bad day, you would see 150 vehicles uh, kicking up dust and choking you on dust. There were three other cars there that entire day we were there. So wow. Again, it was a very surreal experience seeing East Africa when most people aren't traveling. But it is, in fact, to my mind, a very safe place to go. And uh, yeah, you have you have to have the COVID test and you have to do diligence, but it's worth the travel. What a beautiful photo this is. I love yeah, these elephants in the clouds. Yeah, and this is the uh, I shot those other elephants at night. This is the next morning we went over to Amboseli and it was really dark clouds, but shafts of light coming out. And I really like that. They, mm. they kind of walked across a better location for me. And this is later in the day as the sun really uh, started coming through the clouds. Um, it, the heat and the distances you're shooting across this flat plain creates these mirages. And I actually like that because whenever I can get a photo that doesn't look like the classic sharp shot of an elephant, I'm actually liking it. And so the distortion of the heat creates something much more impressionistic. Yes. I've talked about that in the past. So I was actually pleased with this. There's nothing. Beautiful. Yeah, I love it. It's just very impressionistic. And this herd of elephants were just running like a bat out of hell. And I kept on thinking there must have been a lion or something that startled them. But in fact, they were just running for several miles. And we tried to stay up with them on a parallel road. And they finally calmed down, but we never saw what startled this herd. Mm. So here's a classic uh, shot of a little elephant with a bird on it. And in the adjacent lands, the wild lands near Amboseli or Chulu National Park, there's a lot of greenery and birds. These egrets uh, kind of walk with the elephant and as the elephant stirs the grass, bugs and grasshoppers uh, you know, jump ahead and these birds just kind of work with the elephants. And they also ride the elephants, which is kind of nice uh, from a photographic point of view. Very playful, yeah. So yeah, you know, the elephants, I did a book on elephants a year and a half ago I love elephants as a subject and, you know, to do the details, I mean, it almost becomes an abstract landscape when they're covered in mud. So, you know, the details of the eyes, you know, you, you see these eyes and they're looking at you and you just know 
there's a fairly intelligent brain behind those eyes, kind of sizing you up. And, and um, it's just a great experience. Elephants yeah. are just amazing animals. And so there's a classic, historically, that would be a big elephant for me. You know, it's got nice tusks. It's got a, you know, it's a big elephant. And then, and then out of the forest came an elephant I've never seen before, an elephant I've never seen the size of which, and this was the biggest elephant in my life in all the years I've gone to Africa. And this elephant has a name. This is named Tolstoy. And it's one of the last four big tuskers left in East Africa. Wow. It ranges hundreds of miles from Salvo East, which is a great national park, all the way through the wildlands into Amboseli and back. So it's just moving and often, if it's lived this long, it's pretty wary of people. But because there was hardly anybody there, we were able to get really nice shots of it. But I've never seen, quite seen tusks that large. Huge. How old is he? Do we know the age? Uh, you know, I don't think anybody knows the age of this animal. Mm. But I, 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 you know, I'm going to say... At the oldest, they live to be around seven years old. So this is probably six years. You're stunned in silence. I'm stunned in silence. I don't believe it. Bullshit. I fell for that. I fell bullshit. for that. I think I'm, such, I'm such a naive, nice, simple person. That, that was the tequila. You know, I think, uh, I think that they live 70 or more in that age bracket, I think. It's an audience question and Google yeah. perhaps will tell us. Okay. Had I known you were going to ask that question, I would have had the answer like that. We can prepare art. <laughs> <laughs> These are little warthogs. Uh, what I like about this photo is they, they, you know, when the babies run, their tails are straight up like an antenna. But in this particular shot, only one foot of three animals, three little piglets is touching the ground. They were moving so fast. Yeah. So I kind of like that. Cute. And so... Yeah, next week I'm going to show cats and Maasai. This week, all the other ones. Okay. And, you know, when I photographed this topi, it kept, I, I, there was something about it. And I think the way the eyes are set that kept reminding me fondly of you. <laughs> so, you know, it's those eyes just remind me of you, Paramount. <laughs> okay. So, you, know, you know, it's one really strange animal. And I have to speculate that it evolved with these eyes sticking out of the head like that because they're a prey animal. And so it maybe those eyes kind of way out from the, uh, the skull allows it to look somewhat back. I don't know, but yeah, it's a little strange. You're it's way, awesome. you are way better looking than the topi, I have to say. You know, before I met you, my eyes were not like this. I think you spoke about the prey. I think that's how it's become now. I'm, I'm touching my head to make sure there is no horns on it. Well, I'm always attacking you from front, right? <laughs> oh my God. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, I mean, I just like to showcase some of the animals that aren't typically on people's slideshow list when they, you know, talk about their safari. This is a Jiranuk and it's a strange animal. It's got a very long neck. It can stand straight up on its back legs and get uh, leaves that the other gazelles can't reach. So it's a specialist. And it's, uh, you know, it's found in northern Kenya. And I didn't realize that they were actually here down by Amboseli. Uh, a tree full of vultures uh, near a lion kill. I'm not going to, I'm not sparing you, uh, or I'm sparing you the blood and the gore because, you know, people just love shooting entrails hanging out of an animal, but it's not quite something that I go for. Anyway, here's a vulture. I love this shot of the vulture just simply because it looks looking straight at me. It's late in the day, but it's got that kind of beautiful light. I don't know if it comes across on the, the screen into your homes, but that vulture was probably looking at me and thinking, okay, die sucker. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, the, you know, the hyenas are very cute at this age. Oh, yeah, yeah. They are a formidable predator. And in places like the Nagorogoro crater in Tanzania, the prides or the packs of hyenas get so robust, they drive lions uh, out. So they're, you know, they look cute and cuddly at this age, but boy, when they yawn, all you see is really powerful teeth and powerful jaws. So they're 
a force to be reckoned with. They're not, a, not too uh, timid around humans. They often lay right next to the road and won't even wake up if you drive by. <laughs> They're such uh, an interesting animal, hyenas. Yeah, and then there's the black-backed jackal, which wow. are, you know, they look like little uh, coyotes in a way. Mm. But boy, at this time of year, when all the uh, Tommy gazelles and uh, other animals are being born, the small ones, they just wreak havoc because they're, they're also a crafty little predator. But you can see by the size compared to the vultures that they're quite small, mm. they're much smaller than, but they're, that's what they would eat. That little Tommy gazelle was just born a few minutes before I shot that shot. It just came out and you can see the mo poor mother is covered in flies. And, but there were a couple uh, 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 jackals running around, but they never found this baby. And in fact, the mother got up and kind of led the jackals away from the baby. Wow. And here's again in um, Kicheche in the Mara, this, the wildebeest, the resident herd of wildebeest that don't migrate we're having babies and the baby, because I've never seen a baby uh, wildebeest uh, like these. These were born maybe the previous day and they are very nice looking animals, I have to say. But that mother is wary of those little jackals and those jackals will try to come in and take a baby just after it's born. So you can see uh, a little bit of interplay between the, the prey and the predator. Interesting, yeah. So I not shot this behavior before. So it was uh, a nice thing. And I'm thinking I'm closing with this sequence of baboons that were crossing this river. You know, th there were a lot of roads that were closed because of uh, rain swollen creeks and rivers. And so these baboons wanted to cross this river. And so I've never seen them do this before. Mm. And so each one had a different technique. The mothers with the babies clinging. Oh, wow. Look at that. I like that technique. <laughs> <laughs> so next week, next week I will talk about cats. You know, uh, we had a great time with lions and cheetahs and servo, serval cats. And then uh, a really nice encounter with Maasai tribesmen during what they call the Noto, which was a big celebration that only occurs every 10 years in the Maasai culture. So it was very fortuitous that we were there. So that's my little slideshow tonight. Lovely. I love this particular last image too. I'm intrigued for next week to see the cats. I mean, even this particular image, such a beautiful image art. Yeah. And it, that one will definitely go into my uh, wild book that I'm working on. And in fact, one of the reasons I went to uh, Kenya was because I'm, I've got to keep working on these books. You know, they're like planes on the uh, runway ready to take off. So I'm adding to these photos quite robustly. Yeah, I can tell. No, it was wonderful. Thanks for sharing. I do have one question. Um, did you see a big change in kind of nature, if you will? Because the last one year has been, I'm sure, very limited travel because of COVID, right? Less tourists, less, you know, of the usual stuff. And I know we look at it as a horrible year for us humanity. But do you find a difference in just nature based on bouncing back more, if you will? I think that's an excellent uh, question. I don't have an excellent answer simply because I wasn't there last year or the year before to make a comparative. But I would have to think that it, you're absolutely right by your question that these animals are much more chilled and relaxed because there's far fewer cars driving around. You know, um, there are some places in the Mara that are just choked by too many people and too many cars chasing, you know, a leopard so that uh, the drivers can be tipped by the tourists and so forth. And it, it's got to, there's got to be a solution to that because just, there's just too many. But in these conservancies and in the Amara Triangle, it's a much more relaxed and, um, and uh, sparsely populated from a tourist point of view. So they're doing tourism and conservation right. But some of these other parks are just, you know, in it for the money and the more lodges, the more money and it gets overwhelming. But yeah, I would have to think worldwide, we're seeing dolphins coming into the coast of Thailand or coming up the Ganges. There's far more uh, animals showing up in places that 
in the last 20, 30 years we haven't seen. So definitely animals on a worldwide basis are reacting to fewer people traveling. Hmm. That's wonderful. Thank you, Art. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of, you know, kind of nice uh, compliments, you know, on Facebook. I'm tracking Facebook and uh, not questions right now, but just people appreciating wonderful slideshow. Thank you, Art. And, uh, and also looking forward to next week. So Libby, do you have any questions on Instagram or sorry, on YouTube, since we're doing on Facebook and YouTube? I haven't seen any, but... Is she drinking? Yeah, <laughs> okay. disturbing her. Hyenas are never cute. Built <laughs> hyenas are never cute. I somehow agree. I mean, I, you know, maybe baby anything is cute, but the hyenas, I, I got to say, I'm a little worried about hyenas. Uh, they don't look very trustworthy to me for what it's worth. Well, you know, one of the photos in Nine on Earth uh, was taken several years ago and there was a curious hyena and I had a flash on my camera and I crawled out into the savannah away from the vehicle and this hyena came right to me mm. and I took a picture with the red sun uh, post sunset and filled in flash. And I was just confident that they're curious, but the attack on humans by a hyena it would be very rare. Mm. You know, they go for their traditional prey, not humans. So, yeah. or so I believe. At any rate, I think we we're at six o'clock. We've done yeah. our half hour, and people should go have their dinner. And uh, but I, I said this earlier. I really appreciate the fact that people make the time to uh, hear what I have to say or interact. And your letters have meant a lot to me. And uh, we will stay with this. So. It may not be every week, but we'll stay with us. So uh, that's it. And whenever it is, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'll be there too. And uh, in an hour's time, let's tune in on Earth as a Witness. The topic this one is, uh, you know this artist, is your friend, Simon Benny from Jerusalem. And the topic is Tales from Jerusalem. Just wonderful stories from a photographer and a professional tour guide. So we're going to see Jerusalem from a professional tour guide who actually lives in Jerusalem. That's always going to be special. Really nice guy. I look forward to it. Sounds good. See you. All right. Thank you.